it's a, it's a cool study, right? I mean, just the, the whole idea that we're using magnetotellurics to look at the conductivity beneath the ground is, is pretty stunning. And, and that electrical current is not generated by, you know, generators or anything like it's generated by solar particles hitting the earth and worldwide lightning. It, it, it's, you know, this is the sort of thing that I do for a living, this sort of geophysics, and it still stuns me that this kind of stuff is even possible. Yeah, it just, it sounds uh, amazing. And I was looking at the map of where the sites are. Um, and th this is not just a study of the Yellowstone caldera. This is really a huge study area. Yeah, so there were sensors that were deployed all over the region. And, you know, I, I think of these geophysical studies, whether you're talking like the seismic studies or the magnetic studies, it's a bit like a uh, digital camera. And the more megapixels you have, the better your resolution is. So the more sensors you have out there, that's essentially megapixels. And so the more sensors that are deployed, the higher the resolution of the image that you get. And so this is really an incredibly high resolution electrical conductivity image of the subsurface. It hasn't even been possible before in this in this area. Wow. Well, I want to talk a little bit um, about what that image is. But first, the headline from this is, uh, the uh, the the uh, Yellowstone caldera is not going to explode anytime soon. Can we define soon? Uh, not not easily, because in order to know when something might erupt, we need to have some unrest that we're tracking. So you need to know that something's brewing. Um, it's a bit like trying to calculate when a pot of water might boil on a stove, and you could do that if you know how hot the burner is, how much water there is, that, that, that calculation is possible. Well, right now for Yeltsin, the burner's not on. So how can you tell when the pot of water is gonna boil if the burner's not even on? Um, so we, we really can't say when soon is because that source of heat that could get things going just isn't, isn't there right now. But I think that's also a, a reassuring bit that you know the stove isn't on in, in Yeltsin. So we're not worried about a, a volcanic event there um, in the in the near future, it would take a while for the water to get to boiling. Um, that doesn't take away though from the hazards that are in the region. One of them is strong earthquakes. Those are present because of the tectonic uh, activity in the whole region. The 1959 magnitude 7.3 Hebgen Lake earthquake is an example, or these these steam explosions like the one we saw last summer. Um, you know, I remember you telling me something similar to this, oh, geez, maybe five years ago or so, that was based on seismic data. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked back at illustrations of what the seismic data was showing about the magma pools beneath the park uh, from 2015 and 2023. Uh -huh. and as I look at parts of those drawings, um, some uh, are very reminiscent of what we're seeing in these new findings, uh, for instance, that they clearly show that northeast lobe uh, sticking up, and it kind of shows the uh, the new hot spot over there on the east east side of the park, back in the back country. There, um, I don't see in the comparison the disconnected western magma system in those older maps. So, is this something new that that comes out of this study? It's it's yeah, I think it is. Um... We're mapping slightly different parameters with the newer study, looking at electrical conductivity instead of seismic velocity. Um, and so they're they're looking at slightly different parameters. Um, and so we're we're likely to see some differences in in the outcome. And I think actually that the next step in imaging the subsurface at Yellowstone might not be deploying a whole bunch of new sensors. It will be taking both of these two data sets and merging them and trying to understand what the merge data set is telling us, right? Because both data sets are true in their own way, right? There's, there's seismic waves passing through this area and they're slowing down and they're slowing down because it's higher temperature or maybe presence of melt or, or whatnot. And maybe there's some conductivity as well. And the conductivity might be related to melt or some other properties. Um, so they're both telling us what's down there. Um, but they're telling us different things about what's down there. And I think when we merge the two data sets, that's when things can really come into focus. It's like, you know, if we continue the camera analogy, not only having a, a, a very high resolution visible camera, but maybe we have a, also a very high resolution infrared camera as well. And so you can see more of that picture when, when we put things together. Um, the, uh, 
I, I, I want to talk a little bit about that. I mean, you've got that mm -hmm. kind of looks like a clown's shoe. shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Under there. Uh, one of the things that it appears that the study found was that while we have this lava under there, um, and, and, you know, rhyolite, I realize it has has different names at different types, it, that while it's there, it's not doing much because it's not really liquid or of the type that, that would move to the surface. Can you, can you tell us what we're learning about that and what it means? Well, we're seeing the, the heat engine for Yellowstone. And the fact that it's not 100% molten doesn't make it any less hot. You know, it's still incredibly hot rock. But, you know, the, the way we draw cartoons around volcanoes is generally the, the red balloon, right? You sort of draw the volcano and you put this circle underneath it and it's red. And that conjures this image of a magma chamber that's, that's this sort of cauldron that's full of molten rock. That's not what magma chambers actually look like. They are complex mixtures mixtures of different phases so there'll be some liquid there'll be some crystals they may or may not be some gas that's moving around in there or there's certainly gas dissolved in the magma and it'll be exist in different proportions and possibly different proportions in different places that's what one of the seismic studies found was that there appeared to be these horizontal lenses where there was slightly more melt than other layers so almost like a, a bit of a layer cake uh, analogy um so we're learning more about the structure of the magmatic system and yeah it's it's mostly solid but it is still hot rock and that hot rock is sort of the engine that, that drives everything we see in yellowstone in order to mobilize it to really feed a a, a consequential volcanic eruption you would need to remelt some of that and so there'd have to be some input of heat and that can give us some confidence too in terms of what we're monitoring at yellowstone uh, that where we would see that kind of heat input through seismicity and ground deformation and gas emissions and you know changes in geyser activity across the entire park. Uh, so I, I think it gives us a nice status report on, on what it's like down there, and we can use that to help inform our, our uh, understanding of how it might evolve in the future and, and what we ought to be watching out for. I saw in the study also it talked about uh, any future activity is likely to be up to that northeast corner likely outside of the current caldera in the future. I, you know, I know we talked a little bit about timeline before, but, uh, you know, we're not talking about that happening next year or even in the next yeah. 10 years, right? Yeah, th things um, that they found up on that, that Northeast part is, it's still vast majority of it is solid. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, concrete that's 85% set, right? That's really not going anywhere. Um, and I, I'm, I, I think that you know that there's, there's a robust anomaly up to the northeast of the caldera. We see it in the seismic data as well. Um, I don't think that means that necessarily the next eruption would be off to the northeast. It's sort of consistent with the way we think hotspots work and the plate moving and, and that sort of thing. Um, but you know, most of the volcanic activity has been in the caldera, and there's still an awful lot of uh, magma storage beneath there. So I think it broadens our area of understanding of where the magmatic system is underneath the whole region. It doesn't necessarily tell us where the next eruption might be. 